check out that cloud. You know what it'll bring? Not rain. It's taken many times for me to learn. I know this garden's where I want to grow. My life was like a seed of inhibition. But now I feel like a flower in the sun. All's been stripped away, I know for certain. That the life I want to live is just begun. My darling, I have dreamed of you forever. I can't escape the truth of what I know. It's taken many times for me a tumbling. Gardens where I want to grow. Hey y'all, welcome to Stiver's Homestead. I'm Zach. And I'm Jen. And today is a fun video. We got yeah. a few things that we want to show you all and just kind of go over with and do. Yeah. So it's actually kind of got a little cloud. Uh, y'all saw it. Okay, T-Bird. <laughs> uh, y'all saw that right before the intro. Um, we're out here because I, I'm hoping it's our last 90 degree day. I checked out the weather forecast for the rest of the week and it's going to be like down in the 80s. But yeah. uh, that cloud will not bring rain. Raylan's as... birthday is usually like the mm. last summer, hot summer day. Yeah. So we'll see. I don't know. Yeah, we'll Hopefully. see. <laughs> see if old Farmer's Almanac over here holds true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to go over three things today. One, how you can own your little petting zoo in 200 square foot with all the animals. <laughs> Two, what is that black thing that's back there in the woods? <laughs> and three, we seed start more stuff. Yep. We love it. I just love seed starting. And in the fall, you need to be doing it incremental. You don't need to do it all at once. And then transplant it all at once. You need to be doing any there. I'll tell you what. Can't get a word in with this guy. And uh, because you need to be doing it incremental because you, when it's salad mixes, we'll get in more detail on that. You don't want to be harvesting so much lettuce that'll feed an entire army all at once. You want to be doing it repetitive daily kind of thing so we'll get into all that stuff we're gonna go ahead and jump right into this because i think t-bear said let's go <laughs> let's go <laughs> see told you the sun's already breaking that cloud up we can't get a drop of rain here in kentucky <laughs> now it's just gonna be even louder because we're in here with him he's just really in the mood right now so if you follow our channel you know that we have a 200 foot Premier One fencing, don't get dizzy with me. Try to keep up with it. There it rolls around, and we're back to the beginning. So that is 200 foot of square, uh, 200 square foot of Premier One fencing. Oh, did you find Becky? Yeah, she's hot. <laughs> she does look a little hot. <laughs> hot. So, in this pen, we've got what, babe? 27 chickens. I think so. <laughs> Give or take a few on some days. <laughs> five guineas, four ducks, and two female goats, all in this one pen. And I think one of the, uh, let's walk over here in the shade, because it's getting a little hot. I think one of the most popular questions, besides gardening questions, is how do y'all have all those animals mixed together in one spot? So we wanted to use this video to kind of explain a little bit on how we do that. <laughs> the goats want a little attention in the video. There they are, that's Elsa and Anna. So, Kind of how we do it. We have a few different pens and stuff set up in here. That one right there okay, okay. is our chicken coop. And it's a small chicken coop. Uh, it's not incredibly big. However, it's big enough for about 30 chickens. We're pretty much at the max with that. Jen's over here just getting attacked. Yeah. It's basically, it's just for them to sleep in because yeah. they do have all this room and essentially they're free range, mm -hmm. but they're also fenced in. 
their coop is only for them to sleep in and to lay eggs in. So it's yep. small, but it gets the job done. Yep, and it's got two ventilation. Two ventilation uh, holes on the top, including that door stays wide open all day, every day. Um, we don't have to fear of closing the door to protect from predators because it's electrical one fencing does that job. Isn't that right, Elsa? Yes. You, got, you, you guard them too, don't you? Yes. <laughs> so that's where the chickens stay. Over here, this is our kind of little makeshift uh, goat pen that we have, goat house. This is just a spot for them to get out of the sun, stay dry, and just kind of hang out. Um, that's where they like to sleep, and we usually have a pallet over the front, but because we've been so dry and so hot, we just went ahead and pulled it off uh, just to let them have some airflow. When it gets colder and we get some rain starting to flow in, we'll cover the sides and uh, have them a little more set up house for the winter. However, when they get pregnant, and we have to start worrying about milking and having a place for them to birth. We're going to be building a much larger goat area for that. Um, but that's still to come. We're not planning on breeding them this year because they're still too young. So we'll work on that uh, next year. We also built them a little ramp to play on. It's just two pallets put together and we just secured them up. Oh, I bet that hurt a pumpkin. You hit my elbow. Goat kisses. Aww. Can I have a goat kiss? You can't have the mic. She's trying to eat the mic. So that just uh, is a little fun spot for them to run up and down and jump on and have fun. Um, but the biggest thing that we want to show you on how to make this work, specifically with ducks. Ducks are your biggest issues when you have a petting zoo like this and all animals are together. Ducks are adorable, they're funny, they're friendly, but they're nasty. Exactly. Very nasty. They want to spend, honestly, about 90% of their time in water. So if you have all these animals, you need nice, fresh, clean water access for them all the time. Well, a duck's not let, gonna let you have that. They are going to be in that water. Ow, <laughs> bit me right in the belly. Uh, the ducks are gonna get in that water and completely dirty it up constantly. As soon as you change it, they are in it and they're pooping in it and then just destroying it and you can never keep it clean. So here's the trick on how to make that work. First off, here is the duck pool. See how terrible it looks? I changed that maybe an hour ago. And that's what it looks like afterwards, just because that's what ducks do. They like to get in it and swim and clean themselves and get the water dirty. So we had this issue, we have two pools. They kept doing it to both. So how do you at least keep one clean access to water for the rest of your animals? So this is the other pool. This pool is not for the ducks. It is only for the goats and the chickens. So you can see that there's two pallets underneath of it, and Sorry. that is because it keeps it up high and it keeps the ducks out of it. Ducks' feet, you know, they're, they're completely webbed, they're big, they're clumsy, their legs are short, so they can't get up here. Um, even if they tried their hardest, they can't get up that high. So this keeps them out of this pool and lets everybody else have fresh, clean water to drink out of that the ducks can't swim in, and it works perfectly. When we tried it with one pallet, and that wasn't tall enough, so we put another one, and now it keeps it up off the ground, and everybody gets clean water. <laughs> That's right. It's a win-win for everyone. So yeah, just two pallets high, and as you can tell, if this water's clean and that water's dirty, you know that they can't get in this. We've been doing it for a couple months now, and I'm just trying to keep walking so Anna doesn't get fully in the picture. Um, but yeah, you can tell that's nice clean water. The animals love it. They have fresh water to drink, and especially in these 90 degree days, you gotta make sure they have it clean and everything. Uh, we try to change it every single day with our water, um, but thankfully, this stays in the shade, so it stays pretty cool for them and doesn't get too bad. But that is how you solve your watering problem with the animals. Okay, now that you got the watering and your sheltering out of the way, the last thing to be able to do this successfully is the feed. So, it, I guess it could go a little controversial and it depends on who you talk to. However, goats cannot eat chicken feed, but chickens can eat goat feed. And so we do a mix of 18% protein pellets uh, for the goat feed. And then we also mix in some alfalfa pellets for them to make sure that they get it. If we don't have some on hand, they're still eating plenty of alfalfa through the pellets. So that is what everyone gets to eat. They all feed at the same time. Uh, they eat morning and evening and they'll never miss one of those. And a good key thing to keep remembering is never miss a feeding because if say somebody got out, they're gonna come back when it's feeding time as long as you have that routine. So that's uh, kind of the rule of thumb that we do with our animals 
and you all have a happy petting zoo yeah. with a bunch of fun animals, clean water, good food, and plenty of shelter. Also an important point, and this is for food, but it's also for everything. Every single one of these animals, chickens, ducks, uh, guineas and goats were raised together as babies. Yes, so that is a good point. These animals know nothing else. They don't look at each other as danger or fear. Mm -hmm. They honestly, I don't even think any of them know that they're different animals. Yeah. I think that they all think they're the same animal. Yep. Nobody fights. Everybody gets along. Everybody shares the food. There's never any um, aggression or anything like that. And, you know, since they were raised as babies, they think that they're all family. And yep. I think that's the way to do it. I agree. Um, obviously, there's sometimes when you want to introduce new animals, but um, we do that in different ways, and we've talked about that before. But overall, if you raise any of your animals from babies, you'll have a much better chance of them getting along. Yep, that is an incredibly good point that we, I forgot to mention, I'm glad you did. Because if, if we were to put a grown animal in this electrical fence, they're not gonna be trained on it either. And they're gonna try to bust through, especially if it's a bigger animal, like a goat uh, or something like that. Now birds, it's a little different, but um, the goat specifically, they'll just run right through instead of bounce back. So you, you always wanna train them as a youngster. So for the part of them being a compound together and to keep them in the fence. Yeah. And our fence, it's a big thing too. You know, if you want a pet and zoo, this is a way to keep them safe. And mm -hmm. um, we use the Premier One fencing that we've talked about a million times, but yeah. we absolutely love it. It keeps all these animals safe, keeps them in, keeps things out, and it's just perfect. Um, I mean, there's a lot of different fencing stuff you can use, but this is our favorite way to do it. Mm -hmm. And we've never had any issues. We haven't lost anyone. Yep. Um, we have had years where we've lost complete flocks of chickens. But this year we have not lost anyone, so that's great. Um, <laughs> except the duck, but she was outside, the, or he was outside the fence. So yeah. that was our bad. You're eating my hair. Yeah, I'm getting my shorts ate. <laughs> and we're chewing on my hair. <laughs> and we're 100% not sponsored or no. get any kind of affiliate affiliation with Premier One or Premier One fencing. So we honestly just really love the product. So that's why we talk about it so much. Uh, and we have the chicken wire fencing. So just like regular fencing, you're gonna have larger holes, smaller holes, and height. We get the 48 inch high chicken wire fencing, and that seems to work for everybody. Uh, the only difference, is, like I said, is height and square spacing. Yep. You getting goat kisses? Yes. Are everybody's goats this ridiculous, or is it just ours? <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, they're so sweet. I've never had a sweeter animal. I love them. Hi, Anna. <laughs> They act like they don't get enough attention, but everybody sees y'all in almost every one of our intros. Yeah. So, you know, y'all get the love too. Y'all get yeah. to be on the camera. I come out here with them every day. Yep. I mean, our chickens are the same way because this is like our petting zoo. I mean, yeah, they're our animals and ultimately we benefit from what they produce us, but they're all our babies and they're all used to us. They're not scared of us. <laughs> they're just perfect. They're like little doggies. They're just little puppies. <laughs> What's wrong, babe? In the forest. In the forest. <laughs> so when you're tracking through the woods, I don't know about you all, but here in Kentucky, we're usually searching for something. Well, we got a little something here in Kentucky, and a lot of y'all notice so our old boy here, so we had to talk about him. <laughs> Sam the Squatch. Sam the Squatch. I don't know if you can see him on there. Let me turn you around real quick. So Sam the Squatch uh, is pretty much in the background of every video we do. Uh, so we thought we would address him, get a little close up on him. Mr. Squatch was made by Jen's stepdad, uh, old President Larry, old Graybeard. And he cut that out, put it in our woods, scared me to death one day because I didn't know it was there and I just saw him out of the corner of my eye. Uh, but that is Sam the Squatch. He hangs out in our woods, he protects it, and he likes to be a little conversation starter. <laughs> We love him. We, we think it's just such an added technique to it and uh, Larry's just extremely talented and as you can tell it's really cool but everybody talks about him, everybody says he needs a name. That's Sam the Squatch. <laughs> Ow! Oh, <babe. laughs> My feet are strong barefoot but not with thorns. Should've wore shoes. Yeah, that one hurt. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Woo wee! <laughs> Hi baby. I may have to go feed these animals before we get doing the seed starting. Uh, they're about an hour before dinner time, uh, but they thought that they were getting fed when we went in there, so they're a little jacked up now, which I'm sure you hear in the background. So let's talk uh, incremental seed starting for your salad mixes. So if you have watched some of our prettiest fall planting days, we have planted a bunch of salad mixes. Now we've got some other onions and different things that are going on there. 
Um, no, that's a lie because we're doing onions today, but we got beets and some different stuff like that that are root veggies um, that we have started. However, we don't really have a timeline on this fall planting as if like we're trying to hit a date because our real big go here is to plant or to grow as long as possible throughout the winter. Um, we're going to be building some hoop houses. We got this greenhouse here, which the hoop houses will be cool because I'm going to put them on hinges so you don't have to like take them off or pull tarp back. You can just fold them over uh, off your raised beds. So those will be coming soon. Right now it's just too hot to even worry about them, um, but we'll be getting on those soon because we're about, I want to say about 25 days from our first frost date here in Kentucky or in 6B in our area. It's usually around October 15th-ish. Um, when that happens, that's uh, what the Old Farmer's Almanac at least is uh, projecting for us, which is pretty common about every year. Um, however, it's time to plant some more stuff. So I got my hostels container. It's one of my last ones. Um, however, we do have some outside that we left open um, that I'm going to be putting more in. But for now, I got to get all this uh, dirt in here and get it ready. And then we'll go out there and we'll plant some more seeds. All right, dirt is filled. So we are ready to go in there and I'll show you what I'm going to plant here in just a second. Um, but incremental planting, so with your lettuce specifically, with any of your salad mixes, um, if you plant them all at once and then you go over and all your plants are ready to harvest and you have a bunch of them, you're going to have way much more lettuce, way more lettuce than you actually need for your salad that evening or whatever it is. So the biggest key for fall gardening, uh, and especially with lettuce and any kind of salad mixes that you're really not planning on preserving and you're just wanting to use on daily use, you want to do them, I guess ideally in like a two week span, like plant two weeks, wait two weeks, plant some more, plant some more, plant some more. That way when you go to harvest, you'll harvest that first two weeks and then the next day and thereafter, the others will be ready. That way you're getting what you need for a dinner's much instead of having a bunch that you need to figure out how you're going to preserve or give away or sell or whatever it may be. So that's what we're kind of doing today. But I'm also adding a few other things uh, into the fall garden because honestly, y'all, I just love seed starting. And Jen's actually inside canning right now, which we'll catch up with her here in just a second and see how the canning's going uh, because that is still starting to twiddle down a little bit, but we're still pumping on. Um, so I got to get this stuff planted and get ready to get this stuff in the garden. So let's see exactly what we're planting today. Okay, so for our first little bit, we got two different onions. We got some Baker's Creek onions, the bronze de impasta. That's how I'm going to pronounce it. Um, then we got some flat of Italy. That's botanical interest is the uh, seed company that sent those or that we got those from. Then we got some just regular old cabbage. This is the homestead collection from MI Gardener. And then we got some arugula. We actually got these from a seed swap, uh, but the company is the seed plant. The seed, yeah, the seed plant. That's it, just like that. And then we're gonna plant some more starfighter lettuce. So these two are incremental uh, planting that I'm doing, the arugula and the starfighter lettuce, because we already have some of this already in, uh, already started. Uh, but those are gonna be our couple C or uh, lettuce mixes that we're gonna have keep coming on. And so that is the big key factor of why we're doing this. But we needed to get some onions and some more cabbage going, because uh, all I have is uh, the tote noire uh, from Baker's Creek, the purple cabbage and I wanted some green cabbage as well uh, to get into our garden. Uh, but that is what we're gonna get planted. Flowers to my love for not letting me take her. I have longed for her so dearly, for I have missed more than I've seen. Spending all my time on a mountainside with pumps for gasoline. I'm so tired.
Okay, they are all planted. So a couple things to note while planting, which we've mentioned before, but I always like to say it again. Um, with all of these seeds, uh, they were fairly small, so I only went a fourth inch deep to my hole and then put the seeds in. The only one that was kind of big was the Starfighter lettuce from Haas Tools, which we could have went a half inch deep. I actually think that's what they recommend. Nope, they said a fourth inch on the seed pack too. Uh, so kind of general rule with any of this stuff that I planted, if you're planting them too, about a fourth inch deep hole. Uh, lightly cover, keep moist, not soaked. Um, and then for this, uh, we're leaving them outside on the picnic table. I won't even put them in the greenhouse just because it's way too hot in there right now. Um, but it's about perfect temperatures here and we're not getting rain at all. So I don't have to worry about them getting washed out or anything like that. So they get to hang out here on the picnic table. And Windy Isle got another round of seed, starting, seed started for our fall garden. And as you can see over here, our first round is looking great. We got some over here. That's a bunch of them. And so they'll be going in the ground soon, and then these will be right behind them. But that is our seed starting. So that was pretty cool. You got to see the animals. You got to see Sam the Squatch. You got to see the seed starting. Now, final thing, we got to go check in on Jen and see how the canning's going along and if she's done or not. All right, y'all. So you can see that the table is still has a lot on it, but it's much more empty than it was the other day. Um, we still got all our pumpkins, some green tomatoes, the Cherokee tans, a bunch of bell peppers and jalapenos, um, the last of the cucumbers, some okra, and I left some cherry tomatoes because I just like snacking on these. And I might dehydrate them. I haven't decided yet. But today I did 10 more quarts of tomato juice. So pretty excited about that. To add that to everything we have is... I mean, we just have so much tomato juice and it's probably not done. I think we're still gonna have a few more rounds, but I just love it. Um, we do a lot of chili, a lot of spaghetti, a lot of stuff, so we need it all. So it's been a really good day today. Uh, we had Raylan's family birthday party yesterday when we got home and that was awesome. Raylan wanted to show me her glitter. Uh, she got all kinds of stuff from the old fashioned picnic and then yesterday, She's been doing crafts all day. She loves it. Um, we just had a really good weekend, a really good time with family and the friends, and it's just been awesome. So today was very productive. We had to get the house cleaned and get back to homeschooling and canning and all the homestead stuff. And it's just been, it's been really good. It's been really refreshing. And we've got our live tonight, so can't wait to talk to you all. And we're gonna go back outside and wrap it up with Zach. Okay, so you got to see a lot of stuff in this video. You know, you, a lot of people have a small acreage to work with, and so we just wanted to show that you can have all the animals in a small little area. We wanted to talk about Bigfoot, and I love seed starting. It is one of our favorite things to do. It just gets me all jacked up and excited to even seed start. You also got to see Jen's little canning. What'd you tell him in there? I wasn't even in there. You'll see. All right, I guess I'll see. <laughs> so yeah, she got uh, some more canning done. Uh, we're about to do a video after that, just showing all the canning stuff that'll be coming this week. Um, we got some good stuff that's gonna be pumped out for you, but I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, we are a little warm. That cloud that I told you would not produce rain has long gone and the sun is producing some heat again. Uh, so here's to hopefully the last 90 degree day and moving into some 80s tomorrow. That's right. Uh, let us know in the comment what you're starting, seed starting, mm -hmm. and planting, direct sowing, all your fall, fall garden stuff. And we'll talk to you tonight on our live, which will be No, last it'll be, night. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll talk to you in the comments. All right, y'all, until the next one. I love you. Bye.